Hello and welcome. My name is Mark, this is Riffle Shuffle and Roll, and today you're here to learn a little game called Tennessee for Two. Yes, that's right, we are continuing our Rook series here with a little two-player game designed by George Parker. Now, the rules that I'm using are pretty much the same as what he originally published, um, with a few changes to include the Rook card. So the bidding limit is the same, but the total possible points earned each round is a little higher. Tennessee for Two is a game in the trick family with trick taking, bidding, and a trump color as its key features and mechanisms. The objective for the round is for each player to capture as many tricks and count cards as possible with the bid winner meeting or exceeding their bid. The objective for the game is to be the first player to reach a score of 300 points or more. Now playing without the Rook and what's in George Parker's original publication is that players should play to 250 points or more. In order to play Tennessee for two, all you need is a 57 card Rook deck. And in fact, if you don't like the way the Hasbro publication looks, you can get yourself a different option. This is the Blackbird card game deck from Brybelly. So we're gonna be using this one today. You will also need a way to keep score. To set up your Rook deck for the card game, you will need to remove the ones, twos, and threes from each color. The Rook card is optional. Parker's original rules did not include the Rook. This was considered sort of a joker and not used in standard gameplay. We're gonna include it in today's how to play video, but you can remove it, it just reduces the total max possible bid. Cards will rank four as low, 14 as high. Whatever the trump color is for the round ranks higher than the other three colors. And the rook will always be considered the highest trump card. So whatever the trump color is, the rook is considered the highest valued card in that color. When players bid, they're not only deciding how many tricks they think they can capture, but how many count cards they think they can capture too. Fives, tens, fourteens, and the rook are all count cards. Fives are worth five points, tens and fourteens are both worth 10 points, and the rook is worth 20 points. So you have to take those into consideration when you make your bid. Deal 11 cards to each player. Next, deal a five card nest. These cards will come into play here during the bidding phase. The rest of the cards are placed face down as a draw pile. Turn the top card over. Bidding begins with the dealer. They must bid a minimum of 60. If the opponent does not want to raise the bid, they say pass. If they want to raise the bid, it must be by a number divisible by five or 10. So if the dealer bids 60, the opponent must bid 70 or 75 or 65. Well, however much they wanna increase it, that number must be divisible by five or 10. The bidding phase ends as soon as one player passes. Whoever has the highest bid determines the trump color for the round and exchanges cards with the nest. The bid winner must determine the trump color before they look at the nest. We are gonna play that the player at the top of the screen won the bid. They will make yellow the trump color. Now they look at the nest. When a player exchanges with the nest, they must remove any count cards. They are also not allowed to put any count cards back into the nest. So by the end of the exchange, there should not be any count cards in the nest. So here the nest has three of them, the yellow five, yellow 10, and the green 14. There's also another yellow card here. So this actually works out pretty well for the player at the top of the screen. They've picked their four cards to exchange with the nest. So they remove the cards that they want. The rest go in the nest 
and then the nest is turned face down and removed from the rest of the round. These cards will be shuffled back in for the next round. To begin play, the non-bid winner gets to lead first. So the player chooses a card from their hand and leads it to the trick. The following player must match the color if they can. If not, they may play any card from their hand. So they did have one green card. They play the 14 green to the trick. The highest card takes the trick. So our bid winner captured the trick. The winner of the trick can choose to take the card that is turned up or they can draw the top card from the draw pile. Whichever one they choose is collected and added to their hand. The opposite player must take the other option. So since the trick winner took the face up card, they must take the top draw card. Once that has been completed, the next card is turned up. The player that captures the trick leads the next one. Our player here at the top of the screen will lead with the yellow 14. Remember, yellow is the trump suit. Player here at the bottom must match the color if they can. So they are gonna go ahead and play this yellow four. Highest card takes the trick. That player chooses which card they want, adds it to their hand, and the other player takes the other option. Turn the next card up and continue play. If a player leads with the rook card, it is treated as if it is part of the trump color. So this is the same as leading with a yellow card for this round. The following player must play a yellow card if they have it. They do, so they match the color and the rook takes the trick. That player chooses the card. The opposite player takes the other card and a new turn up card is revealed. When the final draw cards have been chosen and the draw pile is gone, play continues with the remaining 11 cards in each hand. Once the last trick has been captured, the round is over and it's time to tally up the score. Each player will earn two points for each trick they capture. Players also earn points for each count card they capture. So in this example, the player earned six points for the three tricks that they captured, plus 20 for the rook, 20 for these two count cards captured, and then five more. If a player fails to meet their bid, then their opponent's score is doubled for the round. Collect all the cards. The player opposite of the previous dealer deals next and continue playing rounds until one player has reached the score of 300 points or more. And that was how to play Tennessee for two. I've got a whole bunch of links down in the description to different pages like my board game geek page or my Reddit page. Just little things you might be interested in, especially the traditional card game Discord channel. And as always, head over to gamerules.com for a great way to browse for new games. Well, that's it for now. Until next time, keep on playing.